Hey everyone, so today I'm going to walk through using the ServiceNow plugin as your Ansible inventory. So this can be really useful if you store a lot of your inventory information in ServiceNow CMDB. By default, you'll see in the, the post here that the table that's targeted is the CMDB CI server, and there are several tables that extend that table, which would also be pulled in. So think like your CI, CMDB CI Linux server or Windows server as well. That's configurable though, so like if you want to pull from a different table, you can certainly do that. And today I'm just going to walk through some of the options you have available to you. If you scroll through the post, you can read through each of them. Um, for my example, I'm actually going to open up an inventory file that I've created using the ServiceNow plugin. So one of the important things when using a plugin is making sure you specify the plugin um, at the top of your file. And the name of the file does matter. So for this particular instance, right, my, my file is called now.yaml, which is what the plugin expects to be able to, or what Ansible inventory expects to know which plugin to pull in. So a few things comment out here. So I've got my environment variables, uh, my host username and password. So locally, I set those in my Python virtual environment, which I have an example of in the post, um, a script called, or modifications you need to make to the activate script. In AAP, which I'll show in a few minutes, I'm gonna use a custom credential to inject those values. Um, you'll never wanna obviously specify those in this file because then they would be checked into version control um, and you don't want that. So the next step here is the columns. So columns are basically the properties you wanna pull in from your ServiceNow CNDB table um, and set as host vars for every host in your inventory. So these are gonna be one-to-one -one mappings. So whatever you put here, if the column value um, in the CMDB, CMDB CI table um, is going to be the value of the host var. Can't do any transformations here. Um, future, we'll, we'll talk about compose, which is where you can do those transformations. So here I'm just specifying, I wanna pull in the you know these 10 or so values and they're gonna be set as host vars in my inventory. Um, key groups is next option we have here. So key groups is when you want to have the inventory plugin be a little bit smart about how it groups hosts together and auto generate those groups for you, right? So I don't necessarily want to provide a list of group names. Um, I want to basically say, okay, based on this property, so in this particular case, I have sys class name. So that could be like CMDB CI server, it could be something like a Windows server specifically, Unix server, something like that. So based off of the value of that property, I'm gonna do a slight transformation, try to coalesce the name. So I'm gonna replace spaces with underscores, make it all lowercase, and I'm gonna prefix it. So it'll be like SN underscore class underscore, let's say Windows Server or something. Um, and doing a key group is to where I don't necessarily have to say, create the group Windows Server and then see if the property equals Windows Server. I'm gonna auto generate all those groups based off of the values that exist. Um, and then there's a second example here using the OS. Now, next, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see I do have a groups entry. So this is when I do, I have a particular group that I want to create, and then I want to use a condition to apply to all the hosts to determine whether or not they should be members of that group. So in this case, I have this ServiceNow EC2 instances group that I want to explicitly create, and then hosts that will be added meet this condition. So in this case, I'm saying the name starts with EC2 or the FQDN starts with EC2. Um, so two major differences, they're both valuable in different scenarios, um, but just keeping in mind um, which particular key to use um, when trying to create groups in your inventory. Here I have commented out, if you don't want the inventory host name to come from the name of the, the record in the CMDB, CMDB CI table, um, you can override that. You can use the inventory host name source key. So Compose, this is a really powerful <clears throat> part of the plugin as well. I mean, it's pretty common if you've other, used other Ansible plugins. Compose allows you to specify host vars and then apply transformations to properties that exist um, that will eventually be evaluated into the value for that host var. So think columns, but you can actually apply logic to the values um, and the example I gave here, which is actually pretty common when you're doing dynamic inventories, 
um, let's say you don't necessarily want to use the inventory host name to connect. You want to specify an Ansible host, which is a special var, um, if specified, is what Ansible will use when trying to SSH to a particular host. Um, in this example, I basically am just doing a precedence. I'm basically saying try the FQDN, um, and then I do a ternary. If it's valid, it will use it. Otherwise, try the IP address. And then I chain that together with another one saying, okay, if the IP address is good, use that. Otherwise, use the name. So these are, depending on how you do your inventories, like you may just want to rely on the inventory host name. Um, but if you want to have a more um, complex logic to determine the host, um, you can do something like this. And then the other one is pretty simple, where I basically take the classification property um, and I convert it to lowercase. So all sorts of things you can do there, um, but that's the difference between compose and columns. And then the last thing I do, um, and this is pretty specific to ServiceNow, is you have two options for adding a query. So if you use just the query key, um, you can put a list of conditions um, to query on, but they are combined with an or. So in the example that's coming out here, it's basically a saying is the OS AIX and is the OS version or is the OS version defined, right? Which is where that's not really useful because if I want to specify that the OS version is AIX, I don't necessarily want to pull in any server that has an OS version defined. Uh, what I really was trying to do was the OS is AIX and the version is defined. So in that particular case, I'm going to use the sysparm query key, where I basically give it a raw sysparm query um, if you're familiar with ServiceNow. Um, so lots of documentation on how to write those, but the example here is basically saying the OS is AIX and the OS version does not equal you know, a blank value, so it's defined. All right, so that's the inventory file as it is. If I want to test, I basically can use the Ansible inventory command locally. Um, and then I do dash I path to my inventory. Um, the directory will by default look for the inventory file in the directory, but I could also go directly to the file like this. And I do dash list and you'll see it pulls back um, some hosts from my inventory. I did do that query, right? So it only pulled back hosts whose OS is AIX. So you'll see some AIX servers and that the version is defined. So if I come up into the host, you'll see OS version has a value for each of these. As well as you'll see the columns that I pulled in. Um, you'll see the logic I apply to Ansible host in the classification. Um, in ServiceNow, the value is actually capital P production. So you'll see that that's the transformation I did there. Um, you'll see some groups that were created. So I've got sys SN class Unix server. Um, so that was based off of my key groups as well as the SN um, OS AIX. Um, again, keep keyed off of the OS value. And you'll see that there isn't a SN EC2 instances. Well, that's because none of these instances started with EC2. Um, so if they did, the group for EC2 instances would have been created as well. Now let's hop over into controller and see what this looks like from the controller side of things. So I've got this inventory here called ServiceNow Inventory. Uh, pick up the details um, and edit. Um, nothing super exciting here, just name. We'll go to sources, which is where I was. Um, and you can add one. I'm going to go ahead and edit the one that I've created. So I called it, you know, I just gave it the name that the plugin has. It's sourced from a project. So that file I just showed you is synced to a Git repository, uh, which is represented by my cloud manager project. I then give it to the path to the file. Um, one tricky thing about this drop down is it does find some stuff in your repository that it will try to use. Um, but you can type in freeform um, a path to your file. And it may not be obvious, but just hit enter and it'll work. Um, I then give the credential. So again, I mentioned earlier, you need those that host username and password. Um, it does also support some OAuth variables. Um, but in this particular case, I have a custom credential type for ServiceNow, and then I give it some values, which will inject into the run. Um, and that's about it. So now if I actually sync this, um, back to my inventory, go to host. I didn't have any because I went ahead and deleted them before I do this demo. Um, let's see, when it's done running, we'll go back and we should see the same host that we saw um, when I just ran it locally, as well as those groups should be created um, in my AAP inventory.
In the meantime, I'll hop over and just show what that ServiceNow custom credential type looks like. Um, it's linked in the post, but it's on my doc site where I have the input configuration and the injector configuration um, where you can basically specify, write your password, username, and then if you have client ID, client secret, you can do that as well. So it looks like the sync finished. Let's go to our list of hosts. Um, and as you'll see, we pulled in those same three hosts. Um, and you've got your Rayleigh groups here. So they're all in the same groups, right? I, I limited this down pretty specifically. I could have pulled in a ton of hosts, um, but just for demo purposes, I kept it small. Um, if I click on groups, you'll see each of those, right? So I've got my SN class Unix server and my SN OS AIX. So if I pulled in a group where, let's say some of the other servers had their OS value to Linux, I would see like SN OS underscore Linux as well. And those hosts would have fell into that group. So hope this was valuable. Um, if you if you have any questions on how to use this plugin or any suggestions for extending or improving this example, um, please feel free to drop me a note. Thanks for watching.